Uh, OK. And talking of food, your last one is, is a story that will strike terror into some people's hearts. Yes. Right? The flower sprout, a new veg for your children to hate. <laughs> Which I guess it is. It's, it's, um, it's bad news for children. The first, the first vegetable is almost 10 years um, is already to hit the shop. It's the first it's, new it's, thing in ten yes, years. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's. I think it's cross between cabbage and Brussels. Yeah, I don't mind Brussels. Do Christmas you not? time, I can't wait for Brussels. And what, what about the, the rest of the family? Do they mind it when you have Brussels? <laughs> 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 yeah, my daughter does give them the new <laughs> I know, when I, when I eat Brussels sprouts, the room <laughs> clears. It's extraordinary. <laughs> I quite like them too. And th this is, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I just, it's just, this is genetic splicing, they call it, gene splicing, to create this sort of, this, this vegetable that wouldn't otherwise uh, exist. Why? 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 I don't understand. Why? Why? Choice, <laughs> choice. I thought Brussels choice. sprouts were cabbages that were just further away. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it is. <laughs> With my eyesight and my encroaching uh, years, I have to say it's difficult to tell, really. Yeah. Um, nicely done, Lisa. What have Thank you got? Uh, front page of the Times, uh, Mervyn King, uh, head of the Bank of England. Uh, not the bowling champ. No, no, nor the darts player. Oh, the uh, darts Mervyn player. King, uh, <laughs> the head of the Bank of England. That's three weird <laughs> namesakes. Uh, has said to Alistair Darling, it's time to make cuts. Uh, it's basically kind of warning that we're, we're not getting out the things quick enough. Because Labour has to... chosen not to. And, uh, but there, there was a sound economic argument, because I kept thinking they were just cowards. They didn't want to start cutting public services before an election in case we ended up hating them even more than we do now. And, but in actual fact, the, the, the argument was that uh, to stave off the, the financial crisis that we need to spend money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you need to stimulate the economy yeah. and, and get people spending. So if this but... stops, then... Apparently, we're, we're looking forward to the figures which will say we're out of the recession uh, and things, but the uh, economic people are basically saying we're not getting out of it quick enough and we need to, to speed up uh, how we reduce our debt as a country. I find it... It's, I sort of said this about uh, us being richer than craft yesterday. I realised I'm richer than Britain. Um, <laughs> Britain has billions of pounds worth of debt. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, it's amazing news to me this week. I've really uh, turned me around. You know, you can go on, like, a website and find your own credit rating. The country has a credit rating, yeah. and they're saying we might lose our triple A credit rating. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world, isn't it? You know, I was still chuckling about that line about how everybody that's really rich always seems to be actually really poor because they have yeah, huge debts. I was still laughing about that last it's night. It's amazing, isn't it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the Daily Express, I would say before I tell you this story, imagine swapping the genders of the two people in the story around cool. and then see if they have a different emotional reaction to it. It's a mum of 36, a single mum of 36, uh, who has been caught having... She's had sex with a 12-year-old boy nearly... 200 times, uh, and she's looking at a, a lengthy time inside, I would have thought. Uh, she, has a, she has a boy of her own. Uh, the boy in question is 12. She was writing it all down in her diary. It's pretty obvious. She was rewarding him with trainers. She was sending her own boy away for a weekend with she friends. She got him drunk so as well, didn't there, she, I believe. Getting him drunk. She was caught because he was boasting about it on a website. Uh, I think, actually, the person I would feel most sorry for would be her son. Yeah, um, because uh, her mum, his mum's probably going to be inside, and also in that way that people horrible snap judgments. It's become public knowledge this has happened, and the windows of her home have been broken. That's not just the windows of her home; that's the windows of his home, yeah. who is a child. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. uh, people should just you don't. Calm down. Uh, you, you seem to be suggesting you don't have as much sympathy for the victim. No, I have sympathy for the victim, uh, but uh, he is in. He's. Well, He's wrong to be boasting about it on a website, but he clearly doesn't appreciate the damage that could be done to him uh, at this uh, stage. And, and point, obviously, I do it? have sympathy for him, and he will. Boy, he's a young boy. Exactly. It's going to change the way he views adults. It's going yeah. to change the way he views uh, teachers. It's uh, it, it, no, absolutely, it, uh, completely. Uh, he at some point later on in life, he's going to be quite damaged by this, and he needs counselling and he needs yeah. help to get through this. I'm not not being glib about his situation. It's and like I say, you swap the genders of those two people around. You say it's a 36 year old man and a 12 year old girl, girl yeah. and yeah. suddenly people feel absolutely. very different about it. It's quite it. interesting because I, I I've been sort of keeping a track of the of these stories that are sort of women seducing underage boys, and I think it would be fair to say that 15 years ago people did view it as a joke. Quite clearly, in the last two years at least, the yeah. sentences yeah, yeah. have started to creep up exactly as if it was a man preying on, on a yeah, yeah, girl. No, absolutely. Which, which and whatever anyone might have of, of any kind of fantasy of younger man, you're not thinking about a 12 year old boy. A 12 year old boy isn't a sexual yeah. sort of presence in, a, mm. in, in any situation. It's just mm. obviously nonsense. Uh, this is from the Daily Mail. This genuinely really annoys me. Uh, the company uh, in America that makes sites which are being used on the guns, which are being used in Afghanistan, have been putting uh, a biblical message on the sites. Uh, they're quoting uh, uh, John 8.12. 
uh, what, which basically John says, it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus Personally, would be very proud, I would imagine, to see that slogan on guns. Yeah, I think they should have gone with either Exodus 20.13 or Deuteronomy 5.17 or like me, like me, like me. What, what or Romans 13.9, all of which say, <laughs> thou shalt not kill. Uh, which um, <laughs> might have been... Uh, <laughs> turns it into, or it makes it possible to make a case for that being a holy war. And it shouldn't be a holy war. It's oh, not about one mean, faith that fighting another. A crusade. But that became, yeah, exactly. When George Bush used the word crusade and, and the damage that that did in terms of PR, okay, it, turns, yeah, yeah. it allows people in Afghanistan to claim that it's a Christian war against the Muslims. It's, it shouldn't be any of those things. Mm. It's utterly ridiculous. I, that really, really uh, okay. bugs me. There are things, if you see in big sporting contests in America, you'll often see people uh, sitting in the stadium holding a sign saying, John 316 just sort of hoping to get on camera. And what I do when I'm in the States, I see them there, John 316, is I go to the stadium and I get in the seat next to them. I sit on that side of them and I hold a sign saying, Brian, what's the time? <laughs> and... <laughs> I say, if you do that at about quarter past three, they really get bugged by that. They don't like that at all. Oh, um... <laughs> This, you were, you, were, oh. you were referring to this. I know she's crying. Oh, right, you, you were on. referring to this before the, before the break, in a way. This is advice that's being given to police officers about how to recognise people. Basically, there are people in the countryside uh, carrying guns for legitimate purposes, like shooting pigeons and deer and, and the rest of it, and there are more and more people being stopped by the police for, for doing this. So uh, an organisation called the British Association for Shooting and Conservation has issued guidance to the police on how to recognise the legitimate legitimate uh, huntsman uh, who's out there. I should say, say we, all, we all profile. I mean, if you look at the two gents on the end of the row in the audience here, I think we'd all know, uh, we'd, we'd look at them and we'd all make a judgement of which one was most likely to, to mug us. Uh, <laughs> in the street, wouldn't we? One of them is wearing a camouflage T-shirt, yeah, 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 yeah. and one of them uh, looks like a nice city gent. We'd all, we'd all make these judgments. Uh, it's a, it's a little pamphlet which is called the Police Officer's Guide to Shooters, uh, oh, no. which is fantastic because that sounds like the Sweeney, doesn't it? Shooters. You want to shoot again? Yeah. <laughs> which is fantastic. But this is ridiculous. Pigeon shooters are the commonest cause of reports of suspicious gunmen because they often wear balaclavas and can be found acting, <laughs> acting furtively around woody, woods and hedges. <laughs> Beer stalkers will be wearing camouflage and may even appear around twilight covered in blood if there has been a kill. <laughs> so police are meant to ignore them. They're OK. Right, they're if, okay. They, if you see a man wearing tweed, he's, yeah, okay. he's OK. I think they're completely unaware about the way in which the image of Burberry has changed <laughs> in recent times. Oh, chavtastic. Thank you. And finally, Gail, at the end. <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, oh, gosh. Right, I'm going to be serious. <laughs> There's um, no other newspaper review like it on British television, I, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> um, front page of The Independent, and, you know, it's a week on since um, the disaster in Haiti, and they actually found a 25-year-old alive, which extraordinary, is... Extraordinary, isn't it? Extraordinary, and extraordinary. I don't know if we've got a picture, but anyway, it's... Yeah, it's uh, yeah you've got now. a purge coming out, and I, I mean, how, it's just incredible and it's wonderful but on the independent they're actually talking about um the ethical um the ethics of um disaster adoption because there's a mass exodus of children getting ticked well they had um 380,000 orphans before the disaster it's edging up towards a million, and so it, yeah. they reckon it's over a million now and they're just discussing you know there's, there's planes going in there's a plane load bound for holland today it's like getting the children out a lot of children are scared and i think they're just discussing is it ethical to just be getting everyone out and yeah. It's, it's an awful situation. Difficult. It's really, really difficult. Maybe and they haven't got any. Tomorrow. They haven't got any food. Maybe we they have do that tomorrow. If you, mm. you think these children, all their, their parents have been killed, so they have no exactly. one to look after them. And the and orphanages so are suffering them, yeah. terribly because they haven't got enough money. They haven't got okay. um, anyway. But it's an awful situation. Um, and now we're at the Independent again. Children who text are best spellers, which I find quite extraordinary oh. because a lot of children text using like great G R yeah. eight, yeah. but apparently it makes them um, it makes them understand the language better and they actually know how to spell great, but they put they use the, the sign. But but it's it's G-R-E-I-G-H-T, isn't yeah. it? Like the number. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know. know. It's like the number. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But my favourite bit is radio presenter John Humphreys has been warned, vandals who are trying to do this to the language is what Genghis Khan did to his neighbours 800 years ago. I think it's a little <laughs> bit harsh, <laughs> don't you think? Yeah, it's true, though, because Ch my daughter, Chelsea, she does all that text and stuff. Where it is she a good speller? Down. She is a good speller, but... 
she will, she does get caught slipping where she does will she, write a sentence like, and I'm like, hey, 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 what is that meant to say? And she's like, okay, <gasps> sorry, mum. Do you one know what I mean? One last quick one for you guys. Oh, um, fish oil, the Alexa. No, I want to go to this next one. If you can quickly get plunge bob tear pants. <laughs> this is my favourite. <laughs> it's in the sun and it's a bobsleigh rider. She's from Edinburgh, Gillian. And look, she ripped her face. Her trousers. <laughs> but you have to feel sorry for her because the, the lens they've got on has made it. I know, it It's really it. embarrassing. And actually, I didn't realise that was a G string. I thought, wow. She's got a really oh, big, oh, yeah. peachy is anyway, all I can say. So, I'm sorry, my headset. Poor girl, but Let's... apparently it made her go faster. Did they? <laughs> well, that's something, I, I guess. Now then, after the break. <laughs>